Hey everyone, it's Anthony Allen Ramos and the film Port Authority made its big premiere at the Cannes Film Festival starring the amazing Lena Bloom. And she, that film actually was the first film to premiere at the Cannes Film Festival to feature a black trans woman as a leading character. And now the film is finally hitting theaters May 28th and then will be available shortly after on video on demand. And so excited today to be talking to Lena Bloom. How are you? Hi, how's it going, Anthony? How are I'm you doing? Good. So, you know, this project, like I said, 2019 Cannes Film Festival. I remember seeing all those photos of you at the, you know, in all your fabulousness. And then now, finally, the world is going to get to see this film. Um, such an important film. What has this journey been like for you to kind of just, you know, break another barrier, make history again? I feel like every week you're doing that. <laughs> We are in the time right now where um, I guess I was born to do something and I'm doing it. You know, that's honestly what it comes down to. There's certain people in society that are born to do things. So they have to go out there and do it, be responsible for it. So um, yes, we shot the film in 2018 and went to the Cannes Festival in 2019. Right after um, the pandemic started, we were on a film festival tour. So this is where the tour starts and finishes and continues, I guess, in a lot of ways. So yeah, the pandemic is opening back up. And through that, Port Authorities is opening back up also. So it's a second round of, of energy that we're showing the world again. <laughs> I'm so glad you got to do the cancel vessel before the pandemic, because that would have been such a bummer to have that canceled, right? Oh my but can God. you tell me about that? Because that is something that I think many of us dream of what that would be like to get to go to the Cannes Film Festival. Um, so tell me what that was like. It was absolutely amazing. I mean, I'm I love the French culture and to be amongst, you know, so many amazing people um, in our business that go there every single year. This was my first year ever going. So it was so many different moments. Um, I was trying to find myself when I wasn't working to just like enjoy the moment and see the city and see what this is about because so many amazing people have had their moment there or come there and seen people have their moments. And it was my time to have mine. So I was a little baby in a big old pool of just everyone. <laughs> so <Big> French pool. <laughs> exactly. And I loved it. It was a nice French pool. Um, back, but with the film, obviously, you know, just for anyone that hasn't seen it yet, because most people I don't think have, it really is about this story about a young guy who's a little bit, you know, not having the best time kind of trying to figure himself out. He ends up meeting your character and, you know, it really kind of just is about their relationship and then his path to, you know, acceptance. But for you, I was, you know, the story obviously incorporates the ballroom scene, which is something you know very well. Yes, uh, it, you know, it covers homelessness, which is also something that you have, you know, been open about uh, speaking about in your own life, you know, until you became the movie star that you are now. But, you know, what was it like for you to have your first big film, you know, relate to so many of things that you have such experience with in your own life? Yeah, I mean, it's full circle for me. It, it was it was really, um, I actually am Paul's character. You know, I moved to New York City on a Greyhound bus, arriving at Port Authorities. You know, I didn't have someone that was supposed to pick me up. You know, I didn't have someone waiting outside that I could make eye contact with to one day, one day fall in love with. Um, I just kind of had to fall in love with myself and my journey. Um, yeah, I, I dealt with a lot of homelessness and that's what Paul's character is going through. So I know how real and how raw and how important this story is to tell um, through many different ways and through many different gazes. Um, so it was just, it was the perfect opportunity to me to just bring um, something unique and different to this experience. And um, I hopefully I, I did that, you know? Oh, you did. I mean, and you know, thinking about that, this story, Port Authority, is about a straight man who falls in love with a trans woman. So what do you want people that see this film to take away from it? 
Yeah, it's it's honestly the right to love whoever you want to, regardless of what the world thinks around you. It's your choice. You know, this is a story about energy. This is a story about vulnerability. This is a story about finding what's real and what's not real. And Paul's character goes on this journey, figuring that out and comparing him to and, and and trying to find the balance in that. And um, he eventually chooses himself and chooses his happiness, which is at the end of the day, most important um, when finding yourself is to just make sure at the end of the day, you learn to love yourself and you learn to work around what works with you and works for you. And, you know, he realized that his group of friends were not doing that. And what was raw and what was real was the love that he shared with me and the relationship I have with my family, which he is in dire need of is family. And that's something that queer people, especially trans bodies, black and brown bodies, don't take advantage of. You know, we don't get the opportunity to have those type of families. So we create ones that we do. And he sees that and he finds happiness in that. Do you think that Part of the solution to sol to ending this horrible wave of murders and horrible violence that we have against trans people, especially trans women of color, do you think part of the, the solution to fixing that is to have more stories like like this that we see in Port Authority for people, for the masses to see that if you know that a straight man and a trans woman can be in a relationship just like anyone else. Yeah, I think we are, we have a responsibility to everyone in society to be seen in all spaces in society. Um, I think it's important that every time you give an opportunity to a young trans black woman or a black queer um, boy or a girl is an opportunity for the world to see something unique and different and special. And I think we need more moments like this. And I honestly can tell you every single time I've had moments, um, the world hugs me more or hugs himself more or um, is, is in this place of like rebirth, you know, because they've seen something um, that was living and breathing around them and they couldn't even get a chance to notice it because society is telling them to suppress that 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 rawness of who they are and i noticed that like once people see me or get to know me or people like me they realize loving themselves and being who they who they are is only a, a small percentage of who they're able to be love that thank you so much for sharing that you know i was just thinking when it, when it comes to uh, opportunities for trans people I was just thinking at the next red carpet that you do, you might be interviewed by Laverne Cox because she just got announced as the face of red carpet with E, which I mean, come on, is so great. How cool is that for, you know, Laverne? And what, what does that say for, you know, opportunities? Well, Laverne was actually the first trans woman I've ever seen on television. Um, she did a show for VH1 um, called um, Transform Me, I think. Um, with Nina Poon and another amazing actress. So seeing where her career is going um, is truly magical and monumental. We got a chance to work together for the Candy Magazine cover in 2014. I love Laverne. Um, I love all the girls that was on that cover of Candy Magazine. We're all doing amazing things. Um, and um, to be on any red carpet where there's a trans woman in a position of power, talking about other trans women in power is a moment to be recognized. And I love that for her. And I hope I can have more moments with many different other trans women in those spaces where we're often in, um, in a place where we're receiving awards or notoriety for the work that we do for our communities and for this world. I find that, you know, with so many of um, the trans women in Hollywood that are in the biz, that are working, trying to you know, break through and, I find that there's so many of you, it's like a really nice sisterhood that support each other and uplift each other for all the good things that are happening in each other's careers. I mean, of course there's gonna be competition just like any other thing, but I think gen genuinely, I feel like that there's a, a genuine love between you all. Do you feel that that's accurate? I think that when you say competition, I think it's healthy competition. Yeah. I think we need to, we need to constantly challenge ourselves. And um, I love the idea that we're in a time right now where 
um, we're all giving this opportunity to kind of like showcase how unique we are individually and how we are uniquely individually just fighting for what we want and what we do also together. I think it's powerful. Um, like I said, when I did the magazine cover of Candy, that was the first time a trans woman that were out the closet were allowed to be on such an amazing magazine that was shot by an amazing photographer um, for an amazing message. So um, that was in 2014. We're now in 2021. Look how much work and how much leadership and how much nuance we have brought to this world because of those moments. And, you know, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for, you know, Marsha B. Johnson throwing that first break. So look at the legacy and look at what we're going and what we're doing now and what we're going to do in the future is truly powerful. The sisterhood is very strong and it's very beautiful. I just got done taping for Pose and all my girlfriends, I've watched them after first season and second season win and I got a chance to be on season three. So I got a, I got to really feel the sisterhood um, being next to my sister India, and MJ and Haley and seeing my sister Tyra who actually was actually the first trans woman I ever did a runway show with in 2000 and like 13, 2012, we both did a show together um, for Fashion Week. So to see where our careers were, where her career was, where my career met her at and where we're going and to see all the different women um, coming and men coming out of the works and coming out of, you know, we've been waiting a long time and we finally are front and center. So we're gonna really show you guys the true colors. You know, you mentioned Pose. Um, I'm so glad for final season, you got to be a part of it. You know, what do you, you know, for you as a viewer, what did it mean for you to see a show like Pose, but then for you to get to be a part of it for the, you know, the farewell, what was that like for you? Honestly, I feel like I was vicariously living through everyone in that moment. I also auditioned for a lot, all the characters on the show, all the leading characters. Unfortunately, I didn't get anything, but I got to experience auditioning for something like that um, and to see the beginning process of that. So I was literally vicariously living through every single person and throughout the whole, um, the, those seasons, I was in, in contact with a lot of the ladies and they were telling me about their experiences and I was telling them about my experiences. And we were just honestly, just so proud to just be working and to, to wake up and to be taken care of and to, to, do, to just be the centerpiece. Um, so it's just, she, they're doing what they have to do. I'm doing what I have to do. And we are uniting together and celebrating our moments together. And Pride is literally in a few days, in a few hours. And I mean, I, I celebrate Pride every single day, but everything is happening very, very soon. And it's our moment to, for all of us to just shine together. So I'm so excited that the cards just set up that way for all of us. I love that. And you mentioned Pride June 1st is when Board yes. of 30 will be available on video on demand. And before that, it will be in theaters May 28th. So everyone, please go check it out. It is a beautiful film um, and so happy Lena, that you got to do this and be a part of it. I cannot wait to see what's next for you. I'm sure it's gonna be something else groundbreaking and record setting and all of that. Know. But um, yeah, everyone just a reminder, Port Authority, May 28th uh, in theaters and June 1st on demand.